Hi everyone, I hope all of you guys are doing very very well. So today I'm going to talk about how you should actually start studying polity and to your surprise, I'm going to say no, don't start with Lakshmikant polity book. That is a horrible idea to start studying polity. The best way to start your polity studies is with this awesome book that I love. I've had this book over the last three, four years since my UPSC preparation days. And this book is called Indian Constitution at Work. NCRT book of class 11th. This is the old one. I don't know if it is used anymore by NCRT, but this is a fantastic book, beautifully written and explains the Indian constitution, the Indian polity in a very simple manner to understand. And I have also written very few steps in order for you to make Indian polity very easy to read because Indian polity is one of the core subjects of UPSC as you're going to work in policy and governance as an uh, IS officer, IPS officer, civil servant. So that is why I feel like it is important to know this very well and also a lot of questions come in prelims and also the mains. First thing that you need to know is that, like I told you, don't start with Lakshmikant at all. If you have to start your studies, start with Indian Polity. Pick up this book, simple 200 pages read and you can definitely finish it within 10 to 15 days if you even study it with other subjects because 10 pages per day, 15 pages per day is definitely doable. And the language of this is very simple. It is not very tough. It tries to make you understand exactly in very basic layman terms. It will ask you many questions. It will give you examples and analogies. So that's how this book teaches you. And that's why I find this book very, very amazing. The thing that you need to, however, do is that while reading this first thing is that you need to start studying it chapter wise. So open the, uh, once you open the table of contents of this book, the first chapter is constitution, why and how. Then the second chapter is rights in the Indian constitution. The third chapter is elections and representation. The fourth is executive, then legislature, then judiciary, then federalism, local governments, constitution as a living document and the philosophy of the constitution. All very, very key topics that always come in prelims and mains. So you start just chronologically. You don't need to change your chapter numbers. Then the second thing that I would like to tell you is don't try to really remember any facts or any details from this particular book right away. During your first reading, when you are reading the first time, don't try to remember anything from it, don't try to remember anything from it. There will be many details, like articles, fundamental duties, which are the details, there will be details from personalities, there will be details from various constitutional amendments, there will be various provisions from the constitution, or whatever the judiciary will be, there will be details from the constitution, there will be details from the constitution, don't try to remember those details from it, don't try to remember those details from it. Just try to understand first, for example, try to understand what is a constitution, how does it work? Why is it needed? In what way is it implemented? And what function does the actually constitution perform for the society? Then after that, the second chapter, let's say is the rights in the Indian constitution. In this, don't try to remember the exact rights. Try to first understand that rights ka origination kya ho, hota hai. What, are the, what is the whole ideology behind the rights? What are the ideas behind the rights? What are the importance of these rights? What does it even mean to have a right? And what are the various fundamental rights overall? There's a right to life, hai, um, a right to dignity, hai, right to privacy. Hai. All these things are there in the Indian constitution, but not directly, but indirectly through other rights. So try to understand that right to equality, right to freedom, personal liberty. So all these kind of things, you should try to first understand detail. Mein ja ke usko yaad karne ki mat karo. Varna kya hoga? Aap details mein phase reja hoga. Overall conceptual clarity, you will actually not be able to get. And that is why I believe that the first reading of any book should be only about trying to understand the overall story, overall context, trying to understand the conceptual things that are there. Uh, and after that, in the second reading, which you have to do anyways for UPSC, then you go into the details of that particular topic. The third thing that is very important is that Google, Google, ye sheet mein dal dunga community channel pe, uh, so you can follow it. Uh, Google basic questions that come into your mind when you are reading this book. So let's say you are reading a chapter on the executive, on the executive branch of the government. So you will be like, who, what is the uh, executive branch of the government? How does it function? But instead of just relying on this book, you should also Google it, executive branch. So you will get an idea about how executive branches work in India. How does it work in US? How does it work in United Kingdom or South Africa? Because that perspective you also need to have. And that will also help you to make your concepts better. So always Google and spend at least 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes trying to understand that major concept that is given in the book and the questions that are coming in your mind. Don't just leave it to the book itself. So that's why I personally always used to supplement my book studies along with my some Google search and some learning from the internet. 
All right, so that is the second thing I would like you to do. The third thing that I want you to do is finally also solve questions at the end of the chapter. So every chapter here in this book has a question table at the end of the book. So for example, constitution, why and how may ye exercise ka aise karke. See, it is a uh, section where exercise of this particular chapter is given and they ask various kind of questions. Some are multiple choice, some are true and false. But I would like you to first read the chapter try to just process it in your mind and after that come to these particular questions and try to answer these questions because that will help you to understand deeply what concepts you have already studied. Um, don't think that UPSC will come or not, that is not the question. The question is concept if you clear your concept. If your concept is very clear, UPSC will come or not, you will be still be able to answer this question anywhere. And especially if it comes in UPSC, of course, answer will And after that, they have also given some questions for you to practice. So for example, there is a question at the end, which you can do answer writing practice from also. Why is it necessary for a constitution to place limitations on the rulers? Can there be a constitution that gives no power at all to the citizens? Such a good fundamental question. And this is the kind of question you should be able to answer and process after reading this particular book. Because even these kind of questions can appear in UPSC anytime. So this is my recommendation for you today. One of the most important subjects for UPSC is polity. And often students go and dive right into Lakshmikanth to study polity. And I would like to tell you that that is not the right way to study for polity. You should first read this book. And hopefully the steps that I have told you will help you to really, really master this book and do well in your exams. Thanks. Have a good day. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.